using a loop to control a menu system. So I'd basically like to walk you through on how you can use a loop to control a menu system so a user can run uh, that program as many times as they would like. So I've set up here a little sample program here and I'll just sort of walk you through it. I have basically three little sample functions right here. Three sample functions. Now remember these can be as uh, anything you want. They can be as complicated as they want, but these just represent three sample functions. Let's move down into our code here. I got a couple of variables going on and I'll want to step you through those. So I've got a char variable. Okay, this variable is actually going to be the variable that uh, kicks us out of the uh, loop. Now since we can't uh, read in a char from a, a scanner, we're going to read our input in there as a string and then pull that char out and save it into quit. And then I actually have a choice here for our actual menu system here for, to call the actual functions that we want to use. And here's where we set up our scanner to read our input from the keyboard. Okay, let's move farther down into our code. So this is basically our core code right here. So if we just uh, take it from right here, look here, uh, here's my system out and basically this is what I'm showing my user here as a menu system. They can pick happy one, two, or three. So either one of these sample functions here, we're going to uh, bring in their input from the keyboard and then we're using a switch statement right here um, to pick and execute whatever function that they chose with the switch. And then I have the default here, so if they chose a number or an integer that was not part of the choices, it hits our default. Okay, so here's the menu system. They pick one, two, or three. They use a switch statement to execute which function that they wanted that they chose. Now, this is what's cool. We can take this basic core code and we can wrap it in a while statement. Okay, and that's all we're doing here. So here's our quit variable. Okay, and we initialize that be with the letter n. Okay, so we're saying does n not equal y? That's true. So if that's true, we'll actually come down in here and run our code. Okay, so now after they've executed the function, the function has done its thing up here, it kicks us back out of the switch statement, and now we're going to have our system out here. It says, would you like to quit Y or N? Okay, so as a user, I'm going to go ahead and say no. And what's cool about this part here, here's where we're bringing in their input from the keyboard. And look here, I'm automatically converting that to a lower case. Why? Because input was a string. So if I entered N, it's going to convert it to an N. Okay. And from at this point here is where I'm actually at the char at, going to pull out that character and store it as a char into quit. So if I said no, okay, this is now n again. So is n not equal to y? That's true. We run our code. I come down here. Now if I go ahead and say y, Okay, it's going to flip it to a lower case. We now have y in the quit. So this is y. So we ask the question, does y not equal y? No, that's false because y does equal y. Okay, so that will then kick us out of the braces here and we're out of the program. Now, why am I using why am I using uh, not equal to y? Okay, this is what's sort of cool. If I mistype down here and accidentally, accidentally hit the letter C, okay, so if I accidentally hit the letter C, okay, so we store a C in here, so we hit a C in here. So does C not equal y? That's true. So now I get to run the program again if I wanted to. If I have it checking for equals equals, okay, and I mistype, then that will knock me out. Okay, so I always have to be accurate. So basically, here I'm uh, 
working the other way and saying not equal, and that way if I mistype, I can still stay in my program and let them have the option to run it again, or they can just simply hit quit. And that's how you can use a while statement to use um, as a to control your menu system and allow your user to run the program as many times as they would like.